The Canon 400D, or Rebel XDI as it is known in the United States, is a camera that's featured quite a lot in my early videos. And I thought it was the right time to give it a proper review and share my thoughts about this camera. Especially if you're thinking about going out and buying one, or if you've got one and you want a second view. I think it might be helpful at least to get a different point of view and someone else's view on this camera. I've used it quite a lot, and I've used it quite a lot in my videos, so... I've kind of got a, a good feel for it and yeah I've got, got quite used to this camera. The camera was released in 2006, in fact it's November 2006 so it's almost 17 years old. If I'm honest I like this camera, I like using this camera, it's got some things that I prefer it not to do but generally I actually like this camera, I think it's a really nice camera. I think it's really well made and it just oozes quality. And like most Canon cameras, or all Canon cameras, it's, it's, it's really well built. In fact, I'm not a brand snob, and I would say that if you're looking to buy a Canon, a Nikon, a Fujifilm, Sony, uh, dare I say Olympus, Lumix, Pentax, Ricoh, or any of the main camera brands, if you're looking to buy one, you're going to get a good camera. And I say that because these camera manufacturers have been making cameras for many many years and over those years they've perfected and improved and improved them cameras so much that that they they really do make good quality cameras and the difference between the camera brands is so small it doesn't make a lot of difference so if you have got one of those brands if you're thinking about buying one you're unsure i, I would say just got to do it. It, it you you won't go wrong no brands are bad the camera was an entry-level camera in its day and I think that's exactly what it still is and if you're the type of person that's using your phone for photography and you're doing really well and enjoying the process and getting lots and lots of positive feedback from Instagram and you're thinking about maybe moving up and using the real camera my, my view is you could go and buy one of these cameras when this was launched it cost about $800 or £600 but today you should be able to pick up one of these for less than £100. In fact, MPB have got these at 50 or less without a lens. So with a lens, you're talking about just over £50 or dollars, uh, and you'll get yourself a good camera. It'd be a great camera for you to learn the ropes of photography, the, the general things like shutter speed, aperture and ISO and all the, the basic stuff. This would be ideal for you to learn how to use a camera. This camera is a 10.1 megapixel. The actual centre inside is is 11 megapixels but by the time they've cropped in the sensor the, the, for the lens it comes out at 10.1 which personally I think is really good. It's got an ISO range of 100 to 1600 so at the top end you it, you, you won't get a lot of light out of this, this ISO range but it, for long exposures it's perfect and 100 is ideal, it's fabulous for this. It does three frames per second burst mode so yeah it's a 17 year old camera you're not going to get 60 frames per second you would do if you had olympus om1 but you know three frames is it, it it's usable and you potentially can get some nice bird shots or or sport shots for that this was launched to replace the 350d and although it's not massively different it has made some marginal gains in particular it's got a 2.5 inch screen where the old one had a 1.8 and this is a really nice screen. It shows you all of the settings you've got set at that time, which is fantastic. What it also benefits from is having a dust filter. So it'll shake the dust off and do all sorts of dust filtery stuff. And it's also got some inbuilt programming that also removes dust spots for you if you've got them on there. And that's a massive improvement on the 350D. And I, that's obviously, we all want that, don't we? None of us want dust on our sensors. It's got nine autofocus points, which I think is great. And nine autofocus points for a camera this age i think it's really good it's, and its battery life is fine and it lasts for about 250 shots the screen on the back can it, it, you can switch that off and leave it off because that takes about 10 percent of battery life it provides everything you would want from an entry-level camera it allows you to do all the usual things it's also got lots and lots of mode portrait sport landscape etc it's got manual mode aperture priority shutter priority and program mode as well so it's got everything that you really want from a from a camera the back screen is really good it's got all the settings you can see what aperture you're on what shutter speed what focus point you're at all those sorts of things that are really helpful when you're out taking photos and you want to see them instantly 
Having said all the good things, it's got a couple of things that I would love to see improved, but I've got to be aware that it is a 17-year-old camera. So one of the things that I sort of take for granted, and obviously was probably wasn't even invented 17 years ago, is having a, a, a movable back screen, at least a, a, a flippy out screen, or at least one that you can move up and down. That that would be that would be really good. I suppose that that's far too much to ask, and I'm really comparing this camera with a modern day camera, modern day mirrorless. That's not what it is, and that's not what it's supposed to be. And the other really frustrating thing for me, the most frustrating thing about this camera is that it only has like a 10 second timer. So when I'm taking long exposure shots, and I've, I, I use this for my night for photography video, and if you want, you can have a look at it up there. So when I was taking night video shots, I had to wait 10 seconds for every shot to take, uh, whereas modern cameras have like a two second timer. So yeah, that's really it. That's all that needs to improve on this camera. I, I, it takes really nice pictures and the colours are great. So if you own one of these cameras, I'm telling you, you've got a really nice camera that w this perfect. You don't need another camera in truth, unless you want to up your photography game and do all sorts of different functions. You don't really need another camera. The dials on the back are easy, easy to get to. If you want to change some things really quickly and simply, you can. You can change things like ISO, white balance, whether you want single multi-shot, all those sorts of things are all really close to your fingertips. But however, to change things like um, shutter speed and aperture, you either have to press one button or two sim simultaneously, which could, it's slightly annoying, especially on modern cameras where you have all these lovely dials on the top and you can quickly, easily switch between different settings within seconds or milliseconds. On this camera, you have to think about which buttons you're pressing and, and in what sequence. So it is a little bit frustrating, but you you know, obviously it's, a, it's an old camera. What do you expect? What I plan to do now is walk around this park where I am now in the centre of Lincoln City, which is called Licorice Park, and try to find some shots using this camera. And I'll show you what the shots come out like, and uh, you can have a look at the quality of, of, of this camera. Of course, it does also come with a 1855 kit lens, which I have used in my previous videos. Uh, and I think this is a really nice lens, considering it's a you know 1855 kit lens i think you can't go wrong with this i think this is a great great little lens it's super so i'll have a look around and i'll take some shots and i'll show you what those shots are at the end there's not a lot to photograph in this park but these flowers are lovely you can always rely on flowers they're lovely purple beautiful flowers so i'm going to use the 400d and i'm going to get a shot of these flowers and Let's see how this comes out. These well-worn steps are great and I'm going to try and take a picture of that bin that's somewhere around there. Uh, with these steps as a leading line towards it. I really like the colour, the look of that little bin, so I'm going to give that a go. The challenge of not having any sort of screen, I've got to get really low, get my eye in looking through the viewfinder, otherwise I can't see my composition and I'm just clicking blind. So I've got to get really low to get this picture of the bin, and uh, that's, a, that's a blind shot, so I'll have to get right down and try to get one looking through the viewfinder. And behind me, here's some brambles, and I hope you recognise my excitement when I see these brambles because you may well or may not have seen the video I posted in the North York Moors collecting brambles, so I've got to take a shot of these now. Brilliant, and I'll put that up now so you can have a look at these brambles immediately. Thanks very much for watching this short video about the 400D Rebel XTI. I hope you found it interesting and useful and I hope it's provided that little extra bit of guidance or knowledge that you need to make your decision on whether you think it's worth going out and spending your money on this camera. It certainly isn't a bad camera and I think if you own one of these or if you're thinking about buying one, I think you're making the right choice. Uh, once again, thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.